So Science Gallery is a space where art and science collide. A hub for art science professionals to come together to explore art and science topics. So the nature of our programming is experimental. We do events, we do exhibitions, we do whole seasons of programming. We don't often know what the outcome will be when we start on a project, and that's the beauty of what we do. The Afterbite exhibition is all about getting inside an animal's mouth and being able to really picture yourself being eaten by um, a variety of animals. So the project is called uh, The Spit Crystal and Ines, which is the artist, she approached us uh, because she had an idea of crystallising spit. And I was brought in because I'm a crystallographer and I should know about crystals and I couldn't understand what this was about, this crystallising spit. Remarkably, after many attempts at growing crystals, we did actually manage to get crystals to grow out of salivary fluid. So the project is called A Cleft in Time, and the aim of the project is to explore the narratives of young people with cleft lip and palate. So the public are given the opportunity to cast their own hard palate using a silicone putty on an impression tray. They can listen to audio clips from young people who have cleft talking about their experiences at school and also how they would like to teach other people who don't understand much about cleft as yet. Researchers who get involved with the Science Gallery programme walk away inspired. So this idea of creative collaboration is something that we hope enriches their own perspective on their research. In some cases it's led to new research directions and think about a topic in a, in a completely new way. I think Maldi's been a, a very good opportunity to look at how you can engage different audiences. So in particular, Maldi's has this quite young teen base that it's trying to attract and that's not really a group of people that I usually interact with. It's very good experience for any scientist and for young scientists especially to be able to talk about their work so any opportunity that projects such as this provide are very very valuable. I think it, if you can't explain in a few words what it is that you're doing then you probably shouldn't be doing it. There are people that they're not scientists and they are really interested on, on working with you and on what you do and I was always afraid and scared to say you know I'm, I'm doing biophysics, I'm doing crystallography because I feel like people wouldn't understand what I'm doing. But through art, I think it's much easier to explain and it's more engaging. Something that gave me great pleasure was watching Ines, who picked up the terminology from us about X-ray crystallography and structural biology, um, explaining to people what exactly we were doing. And then I was trying to explain what she had been doing. The next question would be, you don't do this every day, do you? So what do you actually do? Well, actually, I use X-ray crystallography, the same technique that we've been using to look at these crystals only we do it on allergens and antibodies involved in allergy and asthma and then you start talking about that. Both science and art are trying to reflect on the world in different ways um, and when you bring them together that exploration and reflection on the world becomes much deeper and much more interesting. I think working quite intensely in two different fields brings with it a lot of challenges but also brings unusual opportunities and for me it's added a lot of depth to my area of interest and it means that I really enjoy coming to work if it involves a collaboration between different professionals. <laughs>